How's it going everyone? My name is George and today we are going to be reviewing Space Jam. We are continuing the basketball series of reviews with the 1990s classic that combines basketball and Looney Tunes. And this film came out in 1996 directed by Joe Pika and stars Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny as the opening title suggested. And in this film this is taking place in a fictional world after Michael Jordan's first retirement and his baseball career is not going the way that he had hoped. And while this is happening, these aliens are trying to enslave the Looney Tunes and bring them back to Moron Mountain, where the Looney Tunes, tunes in response, challenge them to a basketball game, but the, but the aliens take the powers of many basketball players, including Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing, and become monsters, so they need Michael Jordan's help. <laughs> and while this does sound like a bizarre plot, it is a fair combination of basketball and Looney Tunes. And by the way, before I continue, I'm using a new mic, so I'm also testing out the mic to see how it sounds. So if it sounds off, please let me know in the comments at the end of this video. But anyways, we're starting the year off continuing these basketball reviews as well as with a new mic for these reviews. So Space Jam, like, like many around my age and older, maybe a bit younger, was a staple of my childhood. Um, I loved watching this movie as a kid. It combined two of my favorite things, basketball and Looney Tunes. And it was actually watching this film as a young kid that kind of got me into basketball, got me into watching games and then eventually playing basketball. And while I watched, I paid more attention to Michael Jordan's career, like when he was with the Wizards, because that's when I was old enough to, to watch him play. Like seeing him like around the 90s, like I always loved watching clips of Michael Jordan in his prime in the 90s. When the Bulls were competing for championships, whether it was like the the first three P or the second three P, I've always enjoyed watching those Bull teams online. But like, but even before like I would watch those highlights, like I always found found Michael Jordan like to be very interesting in this film. And obviously, this stuff did happen in real life where he did retire after the third championship and he went on to play baseball. But this is a more fictionalized account of all that. And I know what a lot of people are going to say about this movie, that people just love this movie for nostalgia. And yeah, that's kind of true. This film is nostalgia for kids that grew up around this time period, or maybe who grew up in the 2000s, but will watch this movie a bunch of times when it was on Cartoon Network and stuff. But I feel like it still did a pretty good job of combining basketball with Looney Tunes. This is a movie that's around an hour and 30 minutes, but it still does a pretty good job of combining and giving screen time to the Michael Jordan side of things and the Looney Tunes side of things. Uh, technologically, like this does a very good job of combining animation and live action. Now, this isn't the first time that we've seen animation and live action be combined. Like we've seen it before with Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which came out less than 10 years before this movie came out. But this movie still did a pretty good job of doing that, which is why it's mind boggling when films that came out afterwards do an even poorer a worse job of doing it than Space Jam or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So this film does a pretty good job of, of combining those two aspects. Um, obviously the Looney Tunes, the Looney Tunes look great. The animation, I would say like when it comes to animation it, from like the mid to late 1990s to most of the 2000s, animation I think was at its highest like when it comes to quality and the quality of how the Looney Tunes look and the animation style looks really good. Uh, the design of the monsters when they get the basketball players powers and become these monsters, they look really cool. They look really good and menacing. So they definitely did a very good job, especially cause like they animated a lot of characters like, yeah, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck are the main focus of this film, as well as this new character, Lola Bunny that's introduced in this film. But still they always, they take the time to, to obviously draw it and animate Elmer Fudd, Sylvester, Porky Pig, and all these other characters. Even the minor characters that you've seen like maybe a few times in Looney Tunes cartoons, like they still do a pretty good job of like animating everyone, like even like the audience cartoon members. And obviously this film is way better than Space Jam a New Legacy. Because this film's just more focused on being a Looney Tunes Toon film where Michael Jordan stars in it. Where Space Jam a New Legacy was like an IP product placement kind of film that's basically promoting all of Warner Brothers. It's not even promoting the Looney Tunes as much as promoting everything else because in the audience you see all these Warner Brothers characters. 
Like, at least here, it's focused on telling a Looney Tunes story with Michael Jordan and other live-action characters. Now, as far as Michael Jordan goes, while he doesn't give the best performance that athlete gives, I think he gives a solid performance. Like, he definitely shows a more comedic side, a more comedic fun side, because if you aren't aware, if you're a basketball fan, you probably knows Michael Jordan was an insane competitor. He was very competitive. He had a killer instinct as a player. So... Seeing this uh, this more fun side of him that still kind of shows like his competitive side, like they still do, he does a very good job of showing that, combining his competitiveness with a more fun comedic side to him. Um, as far as the other live action characters go, uh, Bill Murray's in the film. Um, his story arc is kind of pointless, even though I think Bill Murray's funny because his story arc in this film is all these basketball players when when they're losing their powers to the Monstars. They're based, everyone thinks they're sick because they can't do anything basketball and the league doesn't know what to do. So Bill Murray wants to join the league. But yet at this stage in Bill Murray's life, he's in his mid 40s in real life. Most basketball players are retired by then. And if players do play over 40, it's by their mid 40s that they retire. So while Bill Murray was hilarious, that story arc seems kind of pointless about him wanting to play basketball when most players players retire at that age or already gone by that age i think the only one that's ever played to their mid-40s was vince carter <laughs> uh wayne knight's character stan was pretty annoying like as a kid you find him hilarious but as you get older like you kind of agree with with the characters that this guy's annoying and i'm a fan of wayne knight i find him hilarious but his character stan just kind of felt pointless just like for comedic purposes but in all honesty even though bill murray's character arc feels kind of pointless. It wouldn't make more sense to have Bill Murray be the comedic character. Because I found him more hilarious in this film. Uh, you see other basketball players in this film. Uh, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, Larry Bird. Um, it has a really good soundtrack. Track. It has like some very catchy songs. Like the song opens to I Believe I Can Fly. You got the song Fly Like an Eagle. When Michael Jordan puts on his stuff and he's like practicing with the Looney Tunes. Like it has a really good soundtrack. Like, this film, like, while it's a bit overrated due to nostalgia, for what it's going for, it's still doing a pretty good job. It's not a bad movie. It's not a movie just for children. There are jokes that are for adults in here that I've noticed when I've rewatched this movie as an adult. Not just, like, recently, but, like, other times in, like, the past several years. Like, some jokes that you didn't get as a kid, but, like, you understand as an adult. So they do a really good job of, like, balancing stuff out this is a movie that adults and kids can watch obviously like the kids that grew up with this film that are now adults are probably going to enjoy it more so than other adults but yeah this is still a fun movie uh the voice acting is pretty good i mean you, in this film you got billy west doing the voice of, of bugs bunny this time he does a very good job danny devito voices the main antagonist of this film he does a very good job like I said, the animation's really good. The soundtrack's really good. Some of the performances are funny. Some of them a bit annoying and pointless. But overall, I still enjoy Space Jam, and I think this is a good movie to show the kids. I think it's way better to watch than Space Jam A New Legacy. Uh, it's a movie that I think all audiences are going to enjoy. It's not just for kids, but it's also a product of its time, you can say, because it takes place in the 90s, and it's a pure 90s flick. But overall, with Space Jam, I'm going to give it a B. I highly recommend you go check it out if you haven't already, um, but it's been so many years, so you have so much access to it. You can find it on DVD or Blu-ray. I think it's still on HBO Max. You might be able to find it on HBO Max or whatever streaming service it's now on. But yeah, go check out Space Jam if you haven't already. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Please share this with someone that loves basketball, that loves Space Jam, that loves Looney Tunes. And I'll see you guys real soon. The next basketball review, which will be this week, will be Coach Carter. And it was the first time watching that film, so I can't wait to share with you guys my thoughts as someone who watched that film for the first time. Take care, everyone.